Good morning everybody, it's Kevin Money's here on my YouTube channel and today, today the sun is shining in Malmesbury, it's a beautiful day actually, it's the uh, coming towards the end of February, spring is finally arriving I think. Um, it's been a great week for me, I've just come back from Dubai, from Golf Photo Plus, this weekend I'm heading to Las Vegas for WPPI, I'm literally there for two days or so. I am doing a talk on the Fujifilm booth at 10am on Monday morning and then I'm speaking on the uh, Rangefinder 30 Rising Stars panel at something like 4pm and then I'm getting straight back on the plane and I'm coming back to the United Kingdom because I have to head to Austria to photograph a wedding. However, none of that is particularly relevant unless you are going to WPPI, in which case hope to see you there. Now, 10 days ago or so, I put a YouTube video on my channel where I showed my monochrome editing workflow um, for my Fujifilm RAW files in Lightroom. Now, actually, that video, uh, which I think you'll see the link here now if you want to check that out, will work for all cameras, in fact. It doesn't have to be Fujifilm cameras for that process to work against. And even though I use Lightroom, that process, the actual workflow, will typically work in any other kind of RAW processing software too. So today, one of the questions I had since then a lot, actually, is what about colour? Uh, how do you do your colour? Color processing. So uh, today I'm going to show you how I do my color processing. So we're going to go from something like this file, which is the raw file, and we're going to edit it all the way through to this kind of image, which we will do entirely in Lightroom. But like I said, there are this process will work pretty much with, with any kind of decent raw editing software tool. I use Alien Skin Exposure myself quite a lot, and I will be doing more videos with Alien Skin Exposure in the future to show how I do those edits too. Subsequently to come along when I get back from my travels will be the processing I do for my JPEG files because I actually shoot a lot of JPEGs too and I think that even though the JPEGs out of the Fujifilm cameras are beautiful, in fact they're very beautiful, they do sometimes need a little bit of retouching, a little bit of kind of tidying up and maybe a little bit of contrast and toning of the black and white. So that will come in the future. In the meantime today we're going to concentrate on the colour images. Now, it's still really important, as I said with the black and white one, to say that this is my particular style, my particular process. It's obviously not going to be to everybody's taste, but hopefully it will give you a little bit of an insight into how I use Lightroom, how I use the colour controls, how I use things like white balance and the saturation, etc. To try and get from that very flat raw file that you will get from a Fujifilm camera to the beautiful kind of... Uh, toned finished images that I might give to my wedding clients or my personal clients or my street photography images etc. We're going to work against some wedding images, we'll also work against some of my personal images so you'll get to see an idea of how it works. Um, now one thing I would say if you can I would really appreciate it if you like this channel and you're enjoying the footage and you're enjoying the hints and the tips please subscribe, please like, please comment. If you hit that bell icon which I think is down in the bottom left hand corner when you subscribe you will get notifications for all of the new content. So without further ado, let's go onto the computer and do some editing. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. This is the image, the final image that we're going to try and create. It's my own personal taste. I quite like the filmic look of it. Uh, it's quite vintagey and quite contrasty and quite saturated, which I like probably just going to bump the exposure up anyway on that final one just to, to give it a little bit more brightness. Next thing I'm going to do for the purpose of this kind of workflow is to create a virtual copy. Um, by creating a virtual copy it's not duplicating the file in any way, it's just creating a record of it in Lightroom and I'm going to reset that file. So this is the original RAW file now that we're looking at. You can see there it's uh, shot on the 23F2 lens. This is the original unedited RAW file. Now the first thing I'll probably do is just try and straighten it a little bit. I'm just going to hit the auto on the transform box there. It's just going to straighten everything up and it does a pretty good job actually, so pretty happy with that. And the next thing is white balance. So as I said in the monochrome video, I tend to try and white balance off things like whites of teeth or whites of eyes. Uh, maybe I'll go down to the dress here, but yeah, back to the whites of the teeth. That kind of gives a really neutral white balance. I'm happy with that, bearing in mind the time of the day and the light that was there. Now, the guy on the right there, he's actually one of the best men and uh, lovely guy that he was, but in this particular image, I'm going to get rid of him, I'm afraid. It's, uh, the facial expression isn't really adding anything to the image, so I'm just going to crop that out there. Now, I was always taught that you should, when you're using Lightroom, to try and do some adjustments. Start at the top and work your way down in terms of exposure, uh, color correction, all of that kind of stuff. If you start at the top and work your way down, that's a good workflow. So we'll do that and you'll see that over on the right hand side, I'm going to just bring the highlights down slightly and I'm going to work with the shadows and the whites. Now bear in mind that these settings are my kind of starting point. 
I actually have these settings on pretty much every image that I start of raw files that I'm going to go to color. Uh, oops, a bit of a mistake there. So I'm just going to pop the figures in manually so you can see what those uh, details are, what those actual numbers are. The highlights, the shadows, the whites, the blacks, I tend to do them kind of in uh, reverse order if you like. So when I bring the whites down, I'm going to increase the shadows slightly and the same for the highlights and the blacks. And this typically tries to emulate, if I'm shooting JPEG in the camera, it tries to emulate the shadows and the highlight settings that I set for the JPEGs in the camera itself. Crucially for all of the images are the tone curve and you see you have the standard default linear tone curve there and I am adding control points. So I'm just giving myself a little bit extra. You can add up to 14 or 15 control points, I think, here. I'm just giving myself a little bit of density. I'm just pull in those shadows and highlights visually so I can see them a little bit more. We're actually going to revisit the tone curve a little bit later in this, um, in this workflow because I want to talk to you about the red, the green, and the blue channels independently. And also, crucially for my color work, is the HSL, um, the hue, saturation, luminance. You can see here, if I click all on the right hand side, it's just going to show all of the values. And for the purpose of this demonstration, it's brilliant actually. So as I did with the exposure, I'm just going to pop in my default values into the settings for you. Um, we'll whip through these pretty quickly. And you can see that I'm adding uh, five there for the red, orange five also. Some of them I'm going to bring down, some of them I'm going to increase slightly. Now, like I said, with the exposure data, this is really my starting point, my go-to starting point, and it kind of works okay for most images, although you'll see a little bit later with the, um, the shots of my little kids in the garden that, you know, in some cases we need to revisit and re-edit. All of these are just starting points. None of this is going to be a preset that's going to work straight away off the bat for every one of your images. I always encourage people to, once they've edited their images in any kind of batching at least, uh, especially for kind of like word, uh, weddings or street photography or any kind of batch job, it's worth eyeballing every single image at the end because you know it's not true that every image is going to work just as well with a preset that's just applied totally across the board. Absolutely have to check every image individually at the end of the process. And something that you'll definitely want to check for each image is your um, details and whether you want to add any kind of noise or I usually just leave the default for sharpening. Uh, the remove chromatic aberration, that's Default ticked, but actually it's going to pick up a lot of the stuff from the lens module optimization, built-in lens profile applied, as you can see there. That's going to be true for most lenses, most uh, images that you have, especially for the JPEGs that come through, it's going to pick up all of that stuff. Vignette, I'm just going to pop in a very subtle highlight vignette, or highlight priority vignette, just going to darken it. So by bringing it down slightly, it's going to darken it rather than add it. Now, the grain, I'm not really interested in adding grain. In fact, if I do add any grain, I'll typically do that in alien skin exposure, which I think is a much better tool. But here you can just see, you can just drag that up if you so wish to add your grain here. Uh, like I said, I think that I typically, in fact, always never add grain in Lightroom. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to be doing it in alien skin exposure. Okay, so now we have to go down to the camera calibration panel. And again, very, very important element of this workflow. The profile is just kept on Adobe standard. I don't need to um, change that to any of the camera, like uh, across or uh, classic uh, Chrome or anything like that. What I'm gonna do though is adjust the individual colors, the shadows. I'm gonna just tweak the reds, the greens and the blues. Again, this is my starting point. It's figures that are kind of figure work for me and uh, you know here you can see if I drag that saturation right down looking at the image you'll see that it's just adjusting the overall strength of that hue in that red primary I have it set to 20 at the moment and saturation plus 40 so I'm just nudging that value up a little bit and with the green I'm going to do the same thing and put the value of 33 35 somewhere around there maybe 30 saturation of 5 because it's just very subtle if I drag it all the way over you'll see how much that affects it so 5 for that and the blue channel, um, similar thing. So the values there, I'm gonna bring down a little bit and the saturation, I'm gonna just nudge down slightly also. Much like it did with the black and white edit, the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of punch to the image, a little bit of clarity. And in fact, there's actually a preset in Lightroom that I think is in all versions of preset called punch. And all I'm doing really is gonna add a little tiny bit of clarity, um, not too much in this case, because it's quite, quite a clear image. It doesn't need any density so much. So I'm just gonna pop that up to about 15. And the saturation, I'm also gonna nudge just a little tiny amount, not too much there, just to, to give it that, just raising it off the screen slightly. I really like that. 
I'm also going to adjust the temperature. So my starting point here is just to warm it up a little bit, 4950 thereabouts, and the tint also. So already you can see that this image is a much cleaner, much more um, accurate looking color image than the one that came out of the RAW. So now we're going to revisit the tone curve. Uh, remember I said that earlier, just a moment ago, we're going to look at the red, the green, and the blue channel. So these are my presets, these are my default uh, color uh, control points for red, green, and blue. And you can see as we skip through them, you can see that the actual overall image itself is defined by those control points and the shadows and the highlights in those different colors or the density in those color channels, I should say. This is kind of the key area of getting this, this warm, dense look. And if we go back to the original and switch through, so there's the original, we can see it there. I'm just going to crop this down also so we can, we're similar to the edit we've just done. And I'm going to go into the reference view. So on the right hand side, I will drag the edited version, it says copy one there, and on the left hand side is the original one, the one we were working to. So you can see there, the one on the left and the one on the right, very, very similar. Um, pretty, I can't see any difference to be totally honest with you. And that kind of workflow, that color workflow is very straightforward. There's nothing to worry about in terms of using camera calibrations, we're not using the film simulations, we're using just the Lightroom tools, but the most important thing really is that tone curve, understanding how that works. So let's take that into another image. You can see here, this is of my kids playing in the garden. This is a GFX image, but it's highly underexposed. I'm just gonna crop it down slightly and just bring that down. I'm gonna pop that exposure up to make it a little better, a bit better for us to see. As, you said, as I said, it's a um, GFX image, so there's a lot of dynamic range in there in the shadows and the highlights. I'm just gonna pop on the blinkies for the highlights because it's a little bit bright there, as you can see in the center. So I'll just drag the highlights down until that red dappled area goes away. I'm gonna switch the blinkies off again there. Now, instead of going through all of the workflow again, I'm just going to copy all of the settings across. So I'm going to highlight the two images. I'm going to go up to sync settings and I'm going to synchronize. I'm going to first of all check none and then I'm going to select all of the elements of the edit that were relevant. So basic exposure, tone curve, clarity, the treatment, the color, um, split toning. We didn't do any of that. That's for the monochrome edit. The local adjustment brush was nothing done on there. Brush, I should say. Lens corrections, no. So the, the transform, no, we didn't need to do that because that might be different for each image. The effects, definitely process version calibration, and we will synchronize it. Now, when we go across to the image of the kids, the edit has been added, but of course it's too dark because it took on board that, that exposure correction. So I'm gonna drag that back up, maybe, I don't know, just under two stops, something like that and you know we can see that. So I'm just gonna create a virtual copy of that image and that's the original, the original raw file and this is the one with the edit applied to it. So maybe possibly a little bit oversaturated but you know it's not too bad and I can work on that. Like I said, all of these settings are a starting point more than anything. So we'll do the same thing for this image. I've actually just copied all of the um, preset data from the previous image, which is the kids in the garden, and I paste it onto this one. Now, of course, it's too bright, and the reason for that is because the picture of my kids in the garden was too dark, and so I had to overexpose that. So I've just pasted the wrong exposure value in, so I'm just gonna bring that exposure data down just very slightly, and then that will give us a much better reading. So in summary, really, you have to think about the uh, overall exposure first, make sure you get that right, of course, that's in the top panel, in the in the basic panel. The tone curve is super important, the R, G, and B, uh, red, green, and blue. Again, it's uh, it's probably a little bit about custom personalized taste, but for me to try and get these images at this starting point, it works really well. The next section is the HSL, a hue, saturation, luminance. Again, play with that, get to it as you need to and uh, get to values that you're comfortable with. Split toning is irrelevant. I don't do any split toning in the color images. And then finally, you have all of the camera calibration stuff down the bottom. Once we've done the highlight priority vignette, uh, tints, hues, saturations on the colors, on the red, greens, blues. So there we have the images. Um, yeah, they're pretty good. I'm very happy with those, very happy with those color edits. It's a very simple workflow. There's nothing too extreme about it at all. Just remember those RGB values in the, in the tone curve and you'll be good to go. So it doesn't take too long to do. And we go from this, which is the raw file, the original raw file to this, which is the color edit. A little bit warm maybe, I might tone it down a little bit. This is the underexposed raw file. And this is, again, possibly gonna warm it down slightly or bring the temperature down slightly. 
So there we go, we went from the flat Fujifilm RAW file to the finished uh, color edit. Now of course you may take away from that your entire workflow or maybe just parts of it. Um, whatever, hopefully it's been good useful information for you. So please remember if you do like this video to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, do all of that good stuff that really helps me out. Leave any comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Now one final thing before you all head off. Um, on the 12th and 13th of June in 2018 in the beautiful city of Bath here in England, not too far away from me, I am organizing a conference. It's called X Weddings and I have some of the most amazing photographers coming from across the world. I think that um, although so the speakers are all Fujifilm photographers, the delegates, the attendees absolutely do not need to be and we've got lots of people coming from uh, people who use lots of different systems so don't worry about that too much. I am doing it, I'm speaking myself, my very good friend Neil James is talking also, now please check out Neil's YouTube channel, I've linked to that below, his stuff is amazing, like literally mind blowing so please check out Neil's uh, YouTube channel below. We have York Place Studios who are a brother and sister wedding photography team from York, funny enough, and their work is amazing. We have Marianne Chow, who is one of the uh, Rangefinder 30 Rising Stars. Her work is also amazing, and she's a very, very uh, enigmatic character. She's a um, beautiful, fun, lively wedding photographer, and she's a good friend also. We also have, coming all the way from Canada, Patrick LaRock. Now, some of you will already be aware of Patrick's work. Uh, one of the original Fujifilm X photographers also, I believe. Uh, a very good friend too, and an amazing, amazing image maker. We also have Facundo Santana coming all the way over from Argentina. Facundo is a brilliant documentary wedding photographer who is really setting the world on fire, I think. So hope to see some of you there. 12th, 13th of June in Bath. Um, I will link to the conference notes below. It's www.x-weddings.co.uk. And so have a good week. Have a good weekend if the weekend's coming up. Have, I hope you had a good weekend if the weekend's just gone. And I will see you next time.